All right, and join us on Zoom, uh, Samuel Dewuna, who is the uh, founder of Tech Focus 24, over this big news that broke uh, uh, at the beginning of the week, uh, heightened attentions on social media concerning uh, high mobile data prices. Thank you so much for joining us for Let's Talk Tech. And so what's the story? What, what are the concerns with uh, mobile data charges? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Daryl. I, I, hope, I hope my microphone is on. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, good, good afternoon, Chief Business. Of course, so uh, those of us who have, who have followed what is going on on social media, we all are aware that uh, this report that was put out by cable.co.uk cable that Ghana, is, Ghana has the third lowest data prices in Africa and second in West Africa, and of course, 30, 30, 33rd in the world, quite a number of Ghanaians, you know, seem not to have come to terms with the claims of the report because, particularly because we have seen recently data price increases on MTN in particular. And of course, we all know that MTN has the biggest, you know, number of customers in Ghana. So anything that happens, it's like when MTN sneezes, everybody catches a cold. Mm -hmm. So... So when there's a price increase on MTN, it, it's as if, as, I mean, everybody else in Ghana is starting. So they don't seem to believe But I believe that what Ghanaians are missing is the context within which the price increases are happening on MTN. And if you look at the reports that has come, it shows clearly that in spite of the fact that there are price increases on MTN, still Ghana is maintaining its position as one of the countries with the least I mean, the, 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 the lowest uh, data price in Africa. And, and, and that, is, that is just a fact because this report was not turned out by any Ghanaian, Ghanaian uh, company or any political party or anything for, for anybody to suspect, you know. Cable.co.uk has been doing this for years. And almost every time we do, Ghana is still among the lowest. And so we can talk about why we, uh, the MTN situation is what it is. But then I'm saying... There's no justification in anybody doubting what the report said. So I think that is the report that we get the agitation on, on social media. Well, uh, but are these legitimate concerns by consumers? And uh, what's been the uh, reason given by the telcos for the sort of charges we have for mobile data right now? So, so justification, yes and no. Yes, because if you live in a country where incomes are not uh, rising to the, at the same level as inflation, then, of course, any, any price increase, whether, whether it's what, uh, ut whether utility, water, or whatever it is, uh, telecoms or anything, definitely you are going to have complaints. People are going to complain. So that, to that extent, yes, it is justified. But the other, the other side of the coin that we need to look is that our telecoms industry has been managed in such a way that We've gotten to a place where it is sliding in almost into a monopoly. Mm. And you see, we, we need to be frank about it. If we are not frank about all of these things, we will sit down and then very soon we are going to go back to the days of PNT when we had only one telecoms company in this country. And because of that, people had to queue for, for, for a single telephone line. It was fraught with all kinds of corruption and cronyism. You have to take months before you can even get a, a single telephone line in your house. Now we have market liberalization within that industry. And so now it has been democratized. But then it is gradually sliding back into, into a monopoly. Mm. Look at it. So look at look at the situation we have. All the big players we have in this market have left the, have left the, 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 the market. I don't know whether Ghanaians are paying attention to this. Vodafone is gone. Uh, Airtel is gone. Tigo is gone. Glow is gone. Everybody who came into this market is gone because the market it's becoming difficult for them to survive it. It has taken only one, one player, of course. So some of the things that led to this, this situation is all because of sometimes because of government policy. You know, government have a policy where you are, you are selling, you are selling spectrum that only one person could afford it. That should tell you that that is not the route to go. But government went ahead and sold the spectrum anyway, and then gave advantage to one player. And today we have what we have. In fact, this has happened from 2015. Today we have what we have. But, and that didn't have to be corrected, Darren. Mm. It had to be corrected. 
he has to take a, a, a government that is bold and say that let's take a step to correct and that is what the government has done we have named mtn and smp to a, a, a significant market power which means that mtn's prices have to be controlled because mtn is only the only uh, market player now who can afford to lower prices to which, whatever level they want and just price out every player in this market and that is not what we want as a country and that is what the, the government is trying to do. That's what the policymakers are trying to do. That look, let's reset the entire industry. So mm. let, let's control the price of MTN. Let's not allow MTN to price so low to make it difficult for other uh, uh, players to survive. And that's what we have done. That is the intervention we have done. So, so it is a sacrifice that all of us have to make to save the, the industry from collapse. Or to slide from sliding into a monopoly and then to protect the consumer's right to choice because right. that is something that ITU supports. It's an ITU principle that once you see that one player is becoming independent of the market and it is, it's, we are gradually sliding into a monopoly, control that player so that the consumers are not de denied the right of choice. And so, and so that is what is happening. I mean, Ghanaians need to understand some of these things and then. Go behind this and until such a time that we believe that the, the, the market is really, re we have really done a reset mm. and we are sure that each player can now survive. And then our, our, our right to choice, it's not, it's not denied okay. us. That's what is happening, Darren. All right. Uh, final question. We have just about a minute. And so on Monday, a hashtag dissolve NCA board was trending on my Twitter feed. And, and so right now, have we heard anything from the NCA on the matter? Well, NCA issued a statement to say that, look, you know, <laughs> Darren, some of these things, I need, to, I need to say it carefully. I think that NCA should have, should have owned this narrative about why the price, price are being increased from the get-go. Mm. Because in it, anytime there's price, price to increase, you hear government actors saying that it is MTN doing it, they are taking advantage of uh, uh, Ghanaians, they are trying to make the government look bad. Meanwhile, NCA was fully aware that they, it was upon their directive that, N, that MTN was increasing price. So I thought that, I would have thought that NCA would rise up to the occasion, own the narrative, and then educate Ghanaians about why it is necessary to do this. So if somebody is saying that NCA should be dissolved, maybe because of, because of those things, that, that initially they made it look like it was MTN that is, that is, that is not being fair to, 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 to Ghanaians. But now they are not trying to own it. I think that if you say NCA should be dissolved, then of course maybe the whole government should be dissolved. Why? Because it is a common policy. NCA is just policy implementers. Okay. It's a common policy. At the end of the day, it was even the minister who announced that MTN was being made an SMP. So why are we not saying that the, the ministry should be dissolved? All right. We've got to go. We'll continue this conversation uh, because it's still uh, unfolding. Samuel Dona, um, lead founder for Tech Focus 24, appreciate your time uh, this afternoon on the marketplace. And that's our program, everyone.